the time when you bought your current car or your last car if you don't have one right now. And think about what was it that caused you to say, okay, I need a new car. For some of you, maybe it was, well, the old one broke. For some of you, it was, hey, the lease is up, need a new one. For others of you, hey, got kids, need a van. And for some of you, hey, kids are gone, don't need the van, time for the sports car. But whatever it happened to be, that was awareness. Then you say, well, gee, which one should I get? And at that particular point, we're talking about preference. Uh, you do your research. Use your experience using, for example, the car that you've got right now. Um, you ask your friends. You look on the social media sites. You look on the web, etc. And you say, okay, you know what? For now, this is the car that I think that is right for me. Um, the RAV4, the Maserati, the Lamborghini, whatever it is for you. Okay, I'm more of a RAV4 guy than a Lamborghini guy. But that's preference. Trial is very simple. You go into the dealership. And you don't say, here's my credit card, I'll take that one. You go into the dealership and they say, hey, what car do you want to test drive? And once you know, you know, in, when you're sitting in that car and you're driving it around, you say, yeah, this is for me. This works. Yes, the promise that was made during preference is now delivered during trial, during that test drive. And so then you go into the dealership and you say, okay, uh, I think I do want that particular car. Here's my credit card. Where's the contract to sign it? Unfortunately, with car dealerships, you end up with some very un unpleasant negotiation, but the trust curve is what brings you from, hmm, I don't know, to yes, I'm ready to come in. Uh, inventive, creative, uh, a really strong sense of what, what communicates well and what doesn't. And so, what can we learn from fast food menus? And more specifically, the vastly different strategies of McDonald's and Five Guys. For those who aren't familiar with the McDonald's menu, there is something for everyone. Burgers, fish, chicken in a bun wrap or nugget style, salads, fries, gourmet coffee, and dessert. If you arrive for breakfast, you could choose from yogurt parfaits to oatmeal eggs, uh, muffins, egg McMuffins, juice and coffee. In other words, McDonald's is all about options, options, and more options. At Five Guys, they sell three items. A hamburger, with or without cheese, fries, small or large, and soda pop. Five Guys is all about focus, focus, focus. So here's my question to you. Who has it right? The McDonald's option strategy? Hmm. Their message is simple. Whether you're looking for great coffee, a healthy meal, or, or comfort food, we have something for you. When you come as a group, there'll be something for everyone. And whether you come for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or just looking for a snack, we have just the right thing. All roads lead to us. So what's the insight that we can glean here? Each prospect has their own idea of how and when they like to consume what you have on offer. Even before the sale occurs, consider the many forms of communication and interaction that are possible. And I, I call him the king of making order to chaos. He's really great at being able to zero in on a problem. That's it. Now, this is a, a great session because when I walked in the door, I walked in with a closed mind. And when your session ended, I walked away with a whole new beginning and understanding about social media. How many people have spent any time in Montreal? Okay. Has anybody ever uh, heard of uh, Hotel Eureka? Yes? It's a good hotel? Just heard of it. I'm so glad you didn't say you were there. I asked the same question uh, about a month ago to an audience. I had this slide in there as well. And somebody at the back of the room says, yes, excellent place, excellent place. How do I know about Hotel Eureka? My, my son, who's 19 and a half, um, he's in second year um, uh, engineering at Waterloo. Uh, when, he, when he turned 18, he informed me that he and the two of his friends were going to go on a cultural exchange to Montreal. Uh, for those who aren't so sure, the drinking age in Montreal is 18. It's 19 here. So, so he says, I got it taken care of, Dad. The, we, the three of us, we got mega bus tickets, a dollar there, a dollar back. And we got a boutique hotel right in Mon downtown Montreal. This is going to be just perfect. Okay, we don't need to rent a car. We'll be just there. I think, really, how did you choose that particular hotel? He says, well, I just look for the cheapest, just like the mega bus. Well, guess what? I decided to check it out. And I went to TripAdvisor. And holy cow.
<laughs> Worst hotel ever, it had bed bugs. Hookers and crackheads. I said to him, you know something? It's fine if you want to go there with your friends. I just don't want more of those friends coming back with you into our house. My question is this to you. Do you think that Hotel Eureka cares about what people write? For the first time ever, we have an ear to the conversations that are happening out there. And we've got a choice to do one of several things. We could ignore it like Hotel Eureka. We could listen so we can learn. We could participate in the conversations that are out there, or we can host those conversations and perhaps influence them one way or the other. He's uh, a really good marketer, and he's very knowledgeable. He knows a lot of stuff about business and being an entrepreneur. Broadcasting, and you talk about that, that rather than just broadcasting your message, engage them, right? Because uh, we're right. inundated with these messages, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy well, that. Well, and, and to tell you the truth, you know, two ears, one mouth, use them in proportion. Uh, and this is going to sound like hyperbole, but it really isn't. Randall is one of the smartest people I've ever met, I know, in the world. Well, some basic information about who you are. Imagine your quick elevator pitch, one paragraph, that's it. That's it. And, and just keep off, you know, debaucherous stuff. And, and you know, like, you want to keep off the stuff that you just don't want people to see if, if you were being interviewed by somebody. Indeed, if you were being interviewed. Right. Okay, great. Randall Craig, thank you so much. Glad to be back. Where I would say he is probably one of the most recognized and knowledgeable people in the field. And I would have absolutely no hesitation in recommending him completely without any reservation at all because he's so great. <laughs>